So you'll notice that system head curve is a new run type available. Once you select that, you'll be faced with some options. In the options, you'll need to define which pumps to be tested, as well as what times of the simulation to run the system head curve analysis. In addition to adding discrete times, you can also turn on the dynamic checking uh, to find the time of day for the minimum demand and maximum demand, which will automatically be appended to the list if they're not already included uh, during the simulation. You can also specify the number of curve points. This is just the number of points from zero flow to maximum flow that we will test the pump curve. So once you have the simulation set up, you can run. And if you open the run results, you'll first be presented with a table that will summarize all of your different pump stations and some basic summary criteria of how the pump operates during a normal day or the normal run. So if we select one of these, we can right click and go to system head curve. And you'll notice that now we overlay the system curves on top of the familiar pump station operation tool. So the system curves can be turned on or off. You can also overlay the operating points, which can be helpful to understand the range of how the pump typically intersects its pump curve. So it's often a good idea to make sure that you capture the system curves that capture the full range of how the pump um, operates. You can also selectively go through the, the individual system curves as needed. Once you have them all uh, available, you can also export all of this data to CSV in case you want to do further pump design within Excel. So what can we do with these results? Since we now know the hypothetical head requirements for any flow at this location, we can consider alternative pumps. Starting with the existing pump, we see that the intersections are too high in the curve, which can lead to inefficiency and additional wear. The slope of the, of the curve can also inform future changes. A steep curve implies high system losses. So if you need more flow, you'll also need a pump that can deliver a bit more head. Likewise, a pump with really flat curves means that there is very little head loss and so you can supply a lot more flow without the head penalty. As you gather these system head curves, it's important to capture the full range of head for the, for the system. So it's a good idea to ensure that your simulation encompasses the high and low static head conditions that will be experienced. To gather suitable run times, you could try a query to find the min and max head differences for each pump, such as something like this where we can select the pump station the, and the times of min and max head difference. As we drag this onto the run, it can be easy to see the times of day that you would, would want to include in your system head curve analysis. Let's take a look at another example where we may have multiple pump stations pumping into a common supplied area, such as these two pumps, which deliver to the selected downstream area. If we open the results and select open as full replay results, we'll be able to interact with the normal simulation results uh, to access results for any object. And you can also select individual pumps and select the pump station operation where the system curves will be available. In configurations like this, where pumps are sometimes operating in parallel and sometimes individually, you may notice uh, separate clusters of system curves in this case, the lower set of curves occur as the pump is operating by itself. And then when both pumps are competing uh, with each other, uh, adding downstream head, that will raise up the, the static head required to deliver flow and you'll have this upper flow curve. Seeing this range can be useful for evaluating existing uh, pump performance. But in some cases you may uh, be looking at changing potentially things for a whole pump station, and you may just want one common curve for the total flow through all of the pump station and to extend for the, the total capacity. So one way you can do that is in this alternative network that I set up. So in this case, you can set up the pump uh, station like, like so, where we can simply add the additional pumps all to as all as pump curves within one pump station. 
And if you're going to do this, you will also likely want to set up the controls uh, to accommodate that. So in this case, I keep my main pump active and I don't really need the second pump here. So I can leave it on standby and give it a low set point so I know that it won't actually kick on and, if, and impact my simulation. Similarly, you could either choose uh, system curve times when the other pump won't kick on, or if you're able, you could also uh, set it as um, simply not available so that it won't uh, conflict with that pump curve. So when I now select this, this combined pump station, I'll get a system curve set of flows that will extend out for the, the full combined capacity of my pump station, and I'll get one set of curves. And as I'm on time steps, when either both pumps are on or neither pump is on, it will show me the total system capacity or the pump, total uh, combined pump curve. Uh, or, if an, or if an individual pump is running, you'll see just that one uh, pump's curve.